Hi everyone, I'm Sally Eves, delighted to be back for a one-to-one -one here with Baron Grover, who is Product Marketing Lead at Verisys, particularly specialising in AI and cloud. We had a chance to meet recently, we thought we'd do another deep dive, didn't we? I think with AI, particularly generative AI, the hype is everywhere. We want to cut through some of that to look at challenges and opportunities, and particularly how this can be applied in the cybersecurity space. Firstly, perhaps a little bit of a one-to-one -to, -one to the audience about your role at Verisys, and then we'll get started. Awesome, thank you, Sally. Pleasure. So, in my role at Veritas, I help organizations navigate the landscape of generative AI. There's a lot of hype around this space, but it's really important to think through what it means for you and your organization, and really navigate some of those use cases to start to dabble in this space and take the value from it. Love that, fantastic. And perhaps a place to start, looking at things in the enterprise level, specific challenges there. What are you seeing where Gen AI can make a difference and what people need to consider right now? Absolutely. So. I remember seeing a stat recently, Sally, that almost 80% of CIOs wanted to adopt AI by this year, but only 30% have been able to do so. Exactly. So there's a ton of hype and there's a desire to implement, exactly. but there's real world hurdles. And the first I would think of is this whole concept of uh, needing to talk to your enterprise data. These exactly. large language models themselves are much like encyclopedias. They exactly. are generalists, they, they work great for a breadth of use cases, but organizations have such specific tasks, they want to be able to incorporate their data. Exactly. And there's this whole concept around retrieval augmented generation Indeed. where you are then empowering these foundational models to talk to your data in real time. Perfect. And then it just is so much more valuable for organizations. So that's one of my favorite trends so far. I love that. I've been doing some work about proprietary data as well. Yeah. Super, super interesting. And you mentioned there about stats, brings to mind as well, but we've got this intention action gap to a degree, which is understandable yes. with everything yes. that's happening in the speed of change. One thing that drew attention to me when you were talking there is kind of lack of AI strategy. Because again, the interest is there, but another stat I saw, it's kind of 39%, something like that, actually haven't got that in place yet. So again, getting those basics right, isn't it, is really, really important. Absolutely. I think in this space in particular, mm -hmm. it's really important to have an intentional approach Definitely. and Definitely. to first articulate your AI vision, then exactly. an AI strategy, and then start to come up with a crawl, walk, run roadmap exactly. where you are starting to experiment with different ways to take advantage of this technology. Almost no organization needs to directly go out there and build a foundational model from scratch Indeed. right away. There's ways to start to experiment by exactly. either using an open source model and exactly. doing some prompt engineering or augmenting it with enterprise data. And then in some cases where you might have domain specific data, you can think about fine tuning. But Almost in very few instances, I would say, where there's commercial applications, would someone want to go and they do that investment of creating their own foundational model? But that doesn't mean that you cannot start to take advantage of this technology and start to test your way into it. Exactly, I love that. Maybe think of something else talking there as well, because sometimes when we have these Gen AI conversations, we almost forget to talk about traditional AI. Yeah. And that matters too, doesn't it? And again, I think when we're doing this, doing it in that mindful, thoughtful way. In some cases, you need traditional AI just as much as you need the new. So again, for example, pattern, say, recognition for digital AI, yeah. pattern creation for Gen AI. So again, I'm packing this for audiences, kind of giving the real world examples of how you can use it, but both matter in different ways. I think that's really important too, kind of cutting through some of the noise about the subjects. Absolutely. So traditional AI continues to remain as relevant and in fact has been around for over a decade Absolutely. now. Yeah. In fact, um, at Veritas, we use AI-powered anomaly detection to help our customers recover from ransomware and to be able to uh, exactly. deal with cyber attacks in real time. And I would say that with generative AI, there's a whole new use case uh, exactly. that is starting to emerge around the creation of net new content yes. and net new ideas. Exactly. So both have their place, both have their opportunities, and I think both are going to continue to be increasingly important. And traditional AI is here to stay and it's going to continue to supercharge Absolutely. products and help with intelligence and predictive analytics, for instance. Totally agree with that. And again, another example of complementary strengths, isn't yeah. it? In terms of the different flavors of AI, we're thinking about model generation as well. You know, quite often we have a lot of focus on, say, one particular model. Like Chat yeah. GPT would be a good example of that, wouldn't it? But there are many different flavors, aren't they? Then Llama 2 might be a better yeah. fit. Again, it's aligning it to the purposeful application of that model. What are you seeing there and what developers are kind of looking for? And what are you seeing from, from questions you're getting? Absolutely. So I think, Sally, you touched on something really mm. important, which is 
Developers want optionality. Yes, they yes. want to be able to go out there and evaluate different models to see what fits best for their use case. And for instance, AWS does a really good job of empowering yes. uh, different organizations to go in and, and try out these different models and, and play with them and see what works. And so we're starting to see a lot of more um, of this shift towards wanting to understand which model fits best exactly. for your use case and then testing your way into uh, what, how you want to deploy. And there's no one size fits all in this instance. Exactly. And we're going to continue to see how this open source community comes together to build uh, solutions that, that benefit everybody. Love that. Really, really, really important. And again, doing that in that mindful process. So again, when you're looking at the developer on this, getting even these views on board, you know, that active listening, or as well as the active intelligence that's provided for cybersecurity, I think is key too. And it brings me into another area. Just at the recent events we've both been in, for example, as well, you look at the kind of the insight, the questions that are coming through. And I think for me, we're moving from, say, data literacy for a need for AI literacy. So it brings me onto a skills piece. So, yeah, you know, it's one of my favorite subjects. I had to go down there. But what was your advice for people, people looking at cyber security say as a skill right now and it could be you know somebody at school right now somebody watching this it could be an adult maybe looking to reskill or upskill too we both care about that and again just look at the dynamism of the space that we're in what a place to kind of have agency to make a difference so I know we've only got a short time today but perhaps a bit of a promo for some work we're going to do in, you know in the future about inclusion in cyber security what would your takeaways be there about how to get started and kind of why to be involved Absolutely. So AI and cybersecurity, in my opinion, are two sides of the same coin, and one benefits the other, and there's going to be just a ton of reskilling happening yes. in the near future. In fact, someone called it a reskilling revolution. Absolutely. Because the more you start to take advantage of these new technologies and learn about how they can benefit you and benefit your organization, just the more successful you're going to be in terms of differentiating yourself and differentiating your organization. And there's a ton of great free courses out there, exactly. and yes. also just the opportunity to raise your hand and uh, step up and say, I'm going to be the one to lead these projects. I'm going to be Absolutely. the one to lead um, the discovery for how we can use AI for our specific enterprise. And I think Absolutely. what what most uh, people that we talk to are really good at is understanding their own domain. And if they go out and learn about AI through some of these courses, exactly. they can basically become empowered to figure out what's the best use case of AI for them. Brilliant. And Brilliant. I've come across some really good courses on deeplearning.ai, for instance. And one of my favorite ones is called Generative AI for Everyone. It's a fairly new course, and I would highly recommend it to everybody. Fantastic. Well, we'll definitely share about that. And I think in other areas as well, we've got this convergence, haven't we? So, for example, we've got lots of growing skill gaps in cyber security and testing and architecture yeah. and with some of the changes we're seeing in ESG and in governance for example too yeah. again the need to bring together these different skill sets I think is invaluable so we'll share about that soon and also there's a role model series so a bit of a hint we're going to bring you on there because I think it'll be fantastic gets to again continue this momentum bring more people into the space as we've discussed today a real opportunity here to use AI for positive impact and cyber security more from us very soon but meanwhile thanks for joining us it's been a pleasure sharing more about AI generative in particular in the cybersecurity space and belong. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining.